Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade with another tutorial in the Coding Fundamentals in GML 2.31 series. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about the 2.31 updates to structs, which make them even greater than they already were. So the first key update is that you can now delete struct variables. Prior to 2.31, once you declared a variable inside of a struct, much like a variable inside of an object, there just wasn't a way to remove it. Now you can actually delete struct variables with the function variable struct remove. I'll demonstrate this in a moment. The other big change is that structs now have an accessor. The accessor is the dollar sign and it uses the variable name as a string. And this makes certain tasks easier and allows for accessor chaining with strings. And again, we'll see an example in just a moment. Structs are also JSON compatible, just like arrays. Structs and arrays can be turned into JSON data with JSON stringify and will be returned from JSON data with JSON parse, where structs take the place of maps and arrays take the place of lists. And I'm not going to cover this particular new feature in this tutorial, but I will have an update for the JSON tutorial series that goes over all of this new stuff with structs and arrays. And finally, and this is maybe the most sort of esoteric one, structs now have weak references. So what is a weak reference? Well, structs are garbage collected, which means you don't ever actually need to destroy them. You can use the delete keyword if you want, but you don't need to. GameMaker will automatically destroy or garbage collect a struct once there are no more references to it. But this creates a problem. Let's say you want to know whether or not a struct exists. Well, to know whether or not a struct exists, you have to have a variable pointing to that struct. But as soon as you have a variable pointing to that struct, GameMaker won't delete that struct because there's a reference to it. So weak references essentially create a pointer to a struct that won't prevent the garbage collector from destroying the struct and garbage collecting it. But with that, let's switch over to GameMaker and see some examples. All right, so I've run it and I'm in the debugger. We're gonna start with a simple constructor function that takes a name and a value. We're gonna create our test struct. We can see it down here, it has name, test, value, hello world, exactly what we would expect. And now we're gonna use the new built-in function, variable struct remove, to remove this value. And the way this function works is it takes a struct ID, so test struct in this case, and then it takes the variable you want to remove as a string. So our variable is value. You can see that right here, down here, and we need to pass that as a string. When we do this, it's deleted. So now I'm gonna go over the accessor, but to do that, I thought I would use a slightly more complex example. So we're gonna have a little item constructor. It's just gonna create an item of a certain type and a certain damage, and we're gonna stick that into an inventory array. So we'll just go through a couple of these. Here we go. So we have our inventory down here. It's got three structs, bomb, sword, and shield. And now we have this function right here. And this function is going to return the item's damage when we give it the item's name or type. So let's just step through this function. So we've passed in bomb as our name. We're going to loop through the array. And here you can see the array accessor. We're chaining accessors together. If you're not familiar with chaining accessors, I have a tutorial on it and there'll be a link up above, but we're saying inventory I, so that position in the inventory and then the array accessor. And we're checking to see whether or not that type equals the type that we've passed in. And if it does, again, we're chaining the accessors together. We're saying inventory I, that position, return that damage. Now you could do a version of this before. Prior to 2.31, you could have used variable struct get inventory and then the variable name. But obviously this is a little bit more clunky. And while it's not that bad, only one layer deep, imagine if you wanted to chain five or six layers deep. Say you were using some deeply nested um, JSON data saved as a struct and array. This version right here would get incredibly unwieldy very fast. And you might also think, well, why not use the dot accessor? Like why not just say inventory I dot type? And the problem with doing it that way is that let's say type doesn't exist as a variable name. That would actually crash the program because you'd be trying to access a variable that doesn't exist. But with this version, this simply returns undefined. So if this variable type didn't exist in the struct, this result would return undefined. Undefined would not equal the string name that we had passed in. So this would just be false rather than crashing the game. So this really does provide some very useful value to structs. So let's finish stepping through. Bomb is the very first one. So that's immediately going to find it. 
And here we go, bomb damage 50, exactly what we would expect. And then finally, we have the weak reference. So you can create a weak reference with weak reference create, where you pass in a struct ID and you save it to a new variable. So we'll create it. And now if we come down here, we have our test struct and our test struct reference. And you'll see they both actually point to the same struct, 2D36880, but this one looks a little bit different. And you shouldn't use these reference structs to actually access the struct data itself. But now we can do something like if weak reference alive, test struct reference, then we could just delete this struct, or we could use this like a struct exist check where we then run code on the struct inside rather than crashing our game because that struct no longer exists as a struct. And so again, it can be very useful in some circumstances. I personally haven't used this yet, but I can certainly imagine cases where I would want to. So you might wonder why we need this. Why not have a function for structs like we have for instances, instance exist. And the reason for that is pretty simple. For instance exist to work, GameMaker has to keep track of all of the instances that exist, which it does. And the fact that it does so is great for many things. But the consequence of GameMaker keeping track of all of the instances is that that is a lot of overhead. If you're creating hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of structs and you want GameMaker to track them automatically, then GameMaker has to track all 10,000 struct references. And then you're losing a large benefit that structs being a lightweight object give you. So this is a way to get that feature. But like everything else with structs, it's just something you have to do manually. In summary, now in 2.31, you can delete variables from struct with variable struct remove. Structs have their own accessor, the dollar sign. Structs are JSON compatible. And structs also now have weak references, which allow you to track whether or not a struct exists without actually forcing it to exist. All the links in this slide are below, as well as links to the slides themselves and the source code. And that's it. Thanks for watching.